Welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, for more information, go to bookmap.com. There is a free Bookmap trial for 14 days. It comes with education. Okay, you get the Bookmap educational course. Uh, as well as access to the live uh, uh, order flow advanced um, analysis webinars that start in about a half hour. Okay, there are other resources that you get as well. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look at bookmap.com uh, and just uh, get familiar with it here. Um, there's an intro video here as you scroll down. Uh, and then uh, just some general information about bookmap here. And uh, a bit further down there is bookmap for equities as well as for futures. So for equities, uh, you can read more about it here. It's with NASDAQ Total View. It's an excellent data feed uh, with a variety of advantages. And then uh, other uh, ways to connect bookmap. Uh, bookmap is a true platform just like uh, NinjaTrader is or TTX Trader Pro or interactive uh, brokers trader workstation. Okay, we also connect to the API of those three platforms. However, we're a platform just like they are, so you can connect your CQG, Rhythmic, Gain Capital, IQ Feed, uh, et cetera, uh, all through uh, directly into Bookmap. Okay, uh, a bit further down, <clears throat> this is where you can find the free trial. It's uh, 40, there's 49 per month and 99 per month uh, after the 14 days if you choose to stick with Bookmap. Um, the, uh, they are billed quarterly here, so uh, you get it for three months. And um, the difference between these two uh, are the, um, the add-ons, okay, the, the features. So, for example, being able to click uh, right from the chart and trade. Uh, in Bookmap, which is a nice advantage uh, because you have the liquidity heat map in front of you, uh, so you've you've got that information and you can manage your trades much more precisely. Uh, we also have large lot tracker and iceberg detector that notice uh, or identify larger players in the market. Uh, we have some imbalance indicators, as you can see here, uh, and then we also have a correlation uh, a tracker. That shows you different markets and how they're correlated. Okay, quants, you guys can reach out to us here. You'll have your own needs, uh, and we work with many. So um, uh, just uh, let us know your needs, and uh, and we can help uh, get you uh, exactly what you're looking for. Uh, now, if you're new to Bookmap or new to futures as well, and you don't even have a data feed yet, you can click here. There is uh, a few different... Um, data providers that offer a free trial as well. So you can get a 14 day trial of free data uh, and then uh, and then uh, try Bookmap at the same moment. Okay, so a 14 day trial of Bookmap. Uh, and if you aren't sure which um, uh, version you are interested in here, basic or advanced or quant, uh, you can click here for the complete list and comparison. All right, uh, some of our partners and contact information down here as well. Okay, uh, let's see here. Ah, uh, social media, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, at bookmap underscore pro, uh, and uh, get the most up-to-date information. And you could also subscribe to our YouTube page. And uh, there's um, some playlists here on the front page. Uh, intro videos if you're new here, so just get uh, familiar with what Bookmap is. Uh, features and components get more into the user interface and all the different features and how to use them. Uh, and then the order flow video snippets. Okay, these uh, very short, concise videos go through uh, what Bookmap is visualizing and how to identify it and take advantage of it. Okay, so these um, concise videos. Um, are much more in line with what we go through in the advanced order flow webinars uh, that start at 11 Eastern. Okay, we'll just go through those some of these concepts here in a lot more detail. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at Bookmap. Uh, we had oil inventories uh, this morning, just uh, five or six minutes ago, so you can see the volatility here. 
Uh, might want to check that out, or maybe we'll take a look at the NASDAQ, which we've been covering uh, for quite a while here. Um, now let's jump over to oil. Uh, just uh, want to show you guys something. Okay, in crude. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm zoomed out here, uh, and let me play around with the heat map settings a bit. Okay, I, I want to make this point uh, because you can see it very clearly here in book map. Okay, now I, I made the settings here um, a bit more um, stark so that we can see the difference here, uh, but um, notice these little pockets here at 8.30, look at the, uh, this is a fundamental economic release, okay, at 8.30 a.m., and look how it got dark here. Let's zoom into that area. Okay. It's just fascinating to see this. This is just how these markets operate, okay? Here's our 8.30 time, and here's at 8.29, and a little afterwards, look how all the liquidity dried up. Okay, this, these uh, uh, the heat the heat map the grayscale here uh, is the, the um, uh, historical uh, uh, evolution of that limit order book. So these are areas where people were offering up here and bidding down here, and they pulled a lot of that uh, uh, liquidity uh, because they don't want the risk. Okay, so there's going to be volatility uh, during these releases, and uh, we got a little bit of volatility, not much. Uh, but uh, the larger players, or the players where they stay in the book, uh, those become the attractive levels uh, where uh, the market knows it can trade and get filled. Uh, so um, we see a lot of little trades at back here, uh, back and forth. But uh, the larger, look where we come, we come up to. Uh, these areas did not pull. Okay, they pulled a little bit here, uh, right at the release. But then uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, they uh, they stayed in the book here, and we trade right up into it a little bit beyond it, and then we reverse at that at that point. Okay, so just very simply, um, we can understand higher longer term liquidity and how uh, it it uh, has an effect on uh, on price. Okay, we traded right up into it, and uh, uh, a little bit through it, but uh, it was there was not enough buying pressure to continue on upwards. All right, so um, uh, we uh, reverse down, and um, and you can see that they pulled quite a bit of liquidity, but uh, they stayed kind of in this area here, around uh, 57.48. Okay, All right. So when you notice this kind of behavior, uh, you know there might be a, a, not a, a scheduled economic release like at 8:30 here. Uh, it might be uh, just uh, some geopolitical event, for example. Trump is going to be speaking today about uh, tax reform. Uh, for sure, there's going to be some volatility. Okay? So um, uh, those are a lot harder to gauge uh, because it's not at a specific time or we don't know exactly when the news uh, is, uh, uh, what is newsworthy uh, and when he might say something or Janet Yellen might say something or whomever it might be. Okay, press releases, uh, or maybe some sort of uh, geopolitical tensions like war or uh, terrorist attack, etc. Um, you can see here the 10:30 uh, open uh, or release as well. Same thing in the volatility for oil inventories. And you can see how it got dark in this area here, and they're still kind of um, out of the market. Uh, at the moment. Uh, I mean, they come back in, you know, 10, 1040. It's almost 1040. So um, I'm sorry, just past 1040. So we can see it. Okay. So now for those of you who are new here, um, I'm covering uh, a lot of things very quickly, but uh, the point, the main point here is to understand these markets and how liquidity um, plays in these markets. So Look at how they stayed up here at uh, 57.40. It's exactly where it came to, all right? And that's because the you know, market knows that there are sellers here. It almost came down to the uh, these guys at uh, 57.05, and then they actually pulled, as you can see. 
All right, so what do I mean by some of these uh, concepts? Uh, liquidity, adding, pulling, uh, reading, all of this that looks uh, rather complex. Okay, it's actually very straightforward and uh, objective and rather simple. Uh, so I'm going to close up uh, the indicator subpanel that we have that looks at the CVD or cumulative volume delta, and I'm going to take off and strip off all of these layers of uh, data, and we're going to make this really simple. Okay, we're just going to start with a basic candlestick chart. Okay, open high, low close of a five-minute period. Okay, so here's the volatility that we can see uh, back and forth. Uh, at uh, uh, just after 10:30, and um, so this is a view we're all accustomed to. Okay, there's really um, uh, it's very opaque view of what's going on here, though, uh, because we don't know uh, all sorts of other information. Uh, there's very little understanding of volume here. Uh, we don't know where the volume traded, how much, and what type. Okay. And there's going to be microstructures here because this is a five-minute period of time, and it's just open, high, low, close of that five-minute period. We have no clue about some of the structure that happened within this area because that time period is aggregated. Okay. So the first thing that we uh, can do is look at microstructure just by simply looking at the best bid and offer. Okay. So that's all I've added on here to the chart is historical best bid and offer. Right, and uh, we can see uh, some of these little microstructural areas. Okay, there's one up here. Uh, it, is, it was broken and came back down, and uh, you can see we kind of, re, you know, we're maybe trying to base down here a little bit, but uh, uh, came right back up to where it broke from here, uh, and then we see the volatility. Okay, we can see here another microstructure. Uh, and here as well, and actually uh, because this consolidated uh, for um, uh, 15 minutes, as you can see, we can we can actually see in the candlesticks a bit of that microstructure as well. Uh, but um, and and here as well because it uh, it went it went by for uh, uh, 15 minutes, but we still have no clue uh, where the volume traded here, and that gives us a lot of insight to um, uh, understanding um, the possible future price movement. So let's uh, turn on the volume dots, okay? And uh, and now I know exactly where uh, the uh, uh, trades took place and uh, what type, where, how, how much, uh, and when. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look into this structural area here. I'll just click on the move tool, hover over this area, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in very quickly with my center mouse wheel. Okay, so what's going on here, all right? Uh, the majority of that volume here, it broke from this structural area, as you can see, pretty quickly, right? And this is typical. Uh, in our educational process, this is called a, um, a sweep of the book, okay? They, uh, we were going sideways here for a bit, and then uh, the sellers came in, aggressively hit the bid, uh, and took uh, liquidity from each level as it quickly moved down. Okay, buyer stepped right back in, and then we can see that we moved back up, kind of based sideways here for a bit, uh, and then um, eh, kind of started to drop down a little bit, and then uh, and then we see another sweep. Well, there's many sweeps in here. There's another little sweep in here. There's this another little sweep in here, okay, uh, that dropped us down to a new level. So there's microstructures in here, and um, uh, that's where uh, you know we can uh, gain a lot more insight. Okay, so for example, these three candles here, uh, here's a five minute period, okay? And this is what actually occurred within this candle right here between this vertical dotted line and this line, okay? And uh, we, we get some insight here with this move to the downside, okay? Uh, because uh, this is where they swept the book lower and we stayed lower. Okay, so now uh, we understand that there's there might be an opportunity if we can trade back up into this level that uh, we're probably going to exhaust out. It's not we're not going to find buyers and we'll probably find sellers. And indeed we did. Look at these areas right here. Okay, uh, a lot of selling took place. Okay, this area here as well. We see these red dots. Okay, so. 
Um, uh, and then look at these little areas up here, these little retests to the to the high side. Okay, we're making a lower high, uh, but uh, there's no there's no buying up here. There's none. Okay, so we're exhausting out, and we will rotate lower, uh, and we continue to discover uh, lower prices. Right, so uh, uh, very very insightful information here, uh, and um, let me zoom into this uh, area, and I just want to show you uh, exactly what uh, what we're looking at here on the book map chart because it's very simple uh, data. Okay, we're looking at historical best bid with the green line, historical best offer with the red line. That's it. Okay, now these dots are the transactions that took place on the best bidder offer. Okay, now we use the aggressor classification of volume. Okay, so this dot here is an aggressive market buy. That's why it's green. It crossed the spread and it took liquidity off of the best offer. And if I hover over using this data tip tool, I, I get the date, the time, what was on the ask at this price level, and the volume at this price level. So this, this was a one lot that traded at 57.35. Okay, at 9.30 and 28 seconds and uh, 178 thousandths. Okay, we can continue to zoom in uh, to this level. Now this is a one lot, so it's not gonna be that interesting. Actually, let me zoom out a bit and let's zoom into maybe this level because you're gonna note really what occurred here, okay? This is what occurred. We have actually a little bit of lag as well, uh, a little bit of latency between the best offer and the traded volume. But uh, you can see uh, some mechanical uh, action here. Okay, this is an algo. Okay, look how it's trying to lift the offer, and it actually did lift the offer uh, one tick. Okay, so uh, we see um, very quickly uh, that uh, we trade here uh, in a couple of tranches, uh, four in fact, uh, and then uh, we get a bit of a pause, and then again uh, here. Okay, now we're just down at microsecond level. Okay, we can continue to zoom in here, uh, and we can look down at nanosecond level, as you can see. So we're looking at billions of seconds. Okay, Bookmap can handle all of that uh, data very quickly uh, because we have a very powerful complex event processor. Okay. Now note how uh, we've re recorded every single market event that has taken place here. Okay. But as I zoom back out, we consolidate that information uh, and just aggregate it just graphically because it's all still here. Uh, it, it, but uh, how does that help us? Like uh, we don't really need to see all of that data unless you want to see exactly where your algos are getting filled. Well, that's uh, that's originally what Bookmap was uh, uh, designed uh, to do, and then uh, we uh, uh, thought this was a pretty good idea for a product uh, and um, improved on it. Okay. So now we know exactly what occurred here, but we're giving you the overall shape of this volume with one big dot. Okay. So if I hover over this dot here, let's zoom in just a bit. Okay. Um, and uh, it's going to give me the uh, the volume here, which was 80. Okay, so we know exactly what traded here, uh, and uh, and how much. Right, so uh, that's uh, how we're visually just visually aggregating this. As you can see, we're, we we can zoom right back in and get all of the data if you want. Now, as I zoom out. Now we're looking at just all of these all of these trade events that took place on historical best bid and offer. Okay, and as I continue to zoom out, we continue to aggregate just graphically this data. And at a certain point, you get these pie displays here because there's so much volume that took place here. Like here, if I hover over this area, volume of um, over 1,700 contracts here. That's a lot in uh, in crude. All right. And um, uh, we can see exactly what uh, uh, the overall shape of that volume is, okay? We can see that the majority of it was selling, okay? A slight majority. Anyway, so that's the volume, that's the microstructure, that's what these candlesticks look like, okay? 
we're showing you exactly where that volume traded. Now you're not even going to get this view on a on a footprint chart because a footprint chart is still going to aggregate that data within a bar. All right, so um, uh, we have all of the data here and the microstructure, and we can see who's winning the battles here. Okay, and that's the advantage of the uh, uh, being able to show just that historical best bid and offer, okay, and the volume on it. Now, there's another part of this that's really important, and that is to understand the book, okay? Where are they bidding and offering, right? That data is not present here. I think I take the candlestick off at this point, and I can actually put on our indicator, uh, indicator, and our heat map. Okay, and let me adjust this heat map quickly. Okay, actually that's a little much. Um, all right, so um, now the grayscale. We, we've shown two elements here on this chart: historical best bid and offer. And volume and that's been it so far okay now we just added our third element which is the heat map now the heat map what it's showing you uh, is the uh, history of the limit order book so if I zoom in and lo let's look at the uh, a price ladder over here and uh, this is our depth of market this COB column so here I can see the depth here on the offer and the depth here on the bid Right? And you can see the uh, areas of, of high liquidity here at uh, 57.15 and uh, at 57.08, okay, 144 contracts. And we're one tick away from it. Okay, And uh, you can see the high liquidity, though, in this window here. This is the current market as well. This is best bid and offer and last traded volume. Right? You can still you can see the high liquidity here because we give it a graphical representation. So these 166 contracts are painted bright white because it's a high area of liquidity. Okay, so when you see the numbers change here in the liquidity heat map, you're going to see the heat map change to reflect the uh, uh, large and small liquidity. Where this uh, really comes together is we take that data and then project it on the chart historically. So you can see exactly the behavior of the um, of the auction okay so down in these areas here they came into the book and they wanted to be buyers down here and here okay and we came right into them and uh, and traded uh, through them here at uh, 05 right down to the figure at 57. all right we can see a little retest here uh, and uh, a little bit of exhaustion on the sell side we rotate back up and then we find buyers who stepped in all right, and they pulled the market up out of this little range here. So microstructurally, we are now bullish, okay, because we are above this structure here. Now, if we were going to continue on up to 57.30, what we're looking for is more volumes to start trading up here, like this over here, okay. And this is going to be a, a change in the order flow, okay, a distribution of the uh, from the sell side to the buy side. Now we need to see continuation on this though, okay? Uh, we need to, uh, at this point here, we need to break through 57.15 and we wanna see high liquidity or, or high volume trade up here. And here we go, we're testing it right now. And let's zoom in here a bit and get a feel for it, okay? Now let's let's uh, view the intent of these traders here at, uh, at 15, okay? They stayed in the book up here. So we just made a distinction between real and fake liquidity. Okay, they stayed here. Okay, it did not pull. Some of it, some of it pulled, but the majority of it stayed, and we traded right into it. These traders up here at 57.15, they want to trade. Okay, so uh, it, a lot of traders will say that, that well, you know, I don't really access the limit order book because all of the liquidity is fake anyway. Well, we're able to show you what is fake and what is not okay look at the look at the liquidity down here this is high liquidity but it's very and it's pretty far away from the market okay uh, but um, uh, did they have any intent to trade here well it's it's a little too far away but um, uh, it's very short term okay they jumped in and they jumped out okay so um, uh, the answer is no uh, they did not 
Uh, nor did these guys here. Now this is more aggressive, okay? Liquidity here. And you can see how they pulled at the last minute here or last, last second. See, this is that little area right here of high liquidity. And then, uh, and then they pulled, okay, here. And you can see it got dark as soon as it came up and tested here, right? Uh, and uh, and then the the, the, uh, the volume traded and up up to uh, just shy of this 57.15. Okay, so now we're starting to understand um, many many aspects in context of the auction and where people are positioning themselves uh, with their uh, transactions. Okay, we're also able to start to um, understand fake liquidity and maybe um, nefarious uh, activity of spoofing uh, or, um, uh, you know, a flip of the uh, order book or an ignition algo, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, things that uh, occur in this uh, uh, high frequency environment. Okay. Now, uh, you can see that, uh, look, look how we're rotating back from 57.15. Okay. Because no one wants to take these guys on. They did here. This is where the battle took place. And look at the buying that took place up here. It's very little. Here's our here's our retest, and we don't even get up there. Okay, we come two ticks shy of it. The sellers read that. And it's in this area here where the sellers uh, were exhausting out on the buy side. The sellers read it, and they drive price lower. Okay, And we're back down to the bottom of this range. So understanding the context of this auction, understanding the context of this liquidity uh, and uh, the traded volume, we are able to piece together and understand this move to the downside. Okay, And uh, we can start to target okay, some of these areas as well. So we're back at the fit, uh, 57 figure here. Okay. And uh, let's see if, uh, now these guys, they've been kind of jumping in and out, and they, they did get filled over here previously, okay? But they're, they're, uh, they're back in here for more, okay? So if the sellers want to take them on, they've got to trade through or into these 146 contracts here. All right, so um, anyway, uh, really starting to understand the market, uh, and um, uh, how it moves and how it behaves within the auction. And it's contextual. This is not an indicator. Uh, it's not some sort of MACD crossover, therefore you buy or sell. Uh, you know, it, it, is, it is an auction. And we want to understand the context of that auction to look for an advantage. Uh, for those of you who trade the um, uh, volume profile, for example, uh, you're going to have um, a better understanding of context just because of that's the way it works with volume profile. Uh, and understanding the liquidity context uh, is uh, maybe uh, a bit easier okay, to understand the auction here uh, and, and put those pieces together. Okay, So um, you can see that we're just range bound here now. Okay. But when we come up to these areas here, we want to understand uh, really what's going on here. Now, uh, is this guy here at 57.15, is he back? He's, mm, not, he's starting to show maybe uh, maybe a tick higher here, or maybe uh, maybe they're getting more aggressive here, as you can see. Right. So uh, there's going to be another battle that kind of occurs here. There's a lot of interest. Okay, so far, I don't, I don't, we're not getting a lot of context here. We, we're looking for maybe... Uh, uh, <laughs> flurries of activity and volume uh, that um, show a lot of buying interest that will take these guys on at 57.15. And you can see that we, we didn't really get that, so we're rotating back into the range. Anyway, these are the concepts we go through in the advanced order flow webinars. Um, and um, let's uh, jump over to that. If you guys are in trial, then you'll have the link to it. Otherwise, uh, I see a lot of you guys who are in uh, trial or uh, current customers. So I'll see you guys over there. Okay. Bye.